Now, I've got a long catalog of doing this over the years. Go fact check me if you must. But I have shit on WWE consistently for this crap over the years. Where the heels are actually the underdogs and the baby faces, the heroes, are the villains. Because they're not overcoming obstacles. They are the fucking obstacles. And they've done such a terrible job. You call it the John Cena effect, if you will. But they've done it with others too. But especially with Cena. It's incredibly notable. Like... They would go so far above and beyond out of their way, you know, they tried to sit there and say, we're in the reaction business now, and as long as it gets a reaction, that's all that matters, which is also dumb. You drove away millions of viewers. It wasn't people cutting the cord, it was people tired of watching that crap. But it's that whole element of, like, when you think about the dynamics, like, fundamentally at its core, we could think that wrestling is different, we could think it's this, and we could think it's that. But fundamentally, at its best, consistently... The requirement is having a great good guy and a great bad guy. That shit still plays well in movies and in television, other forms of entertainment. What in the hell makes wrestling so damn different? Wrestling a lot of times likes to pretend it's so different and unique, but in many cases, it isn't. And it's no different here. You've got weak-ass, lame-ass, vanilla-ass feeling heels or guys miscast as heels, or stories that are poorly wrote and written for the heels, and you got baby faces that are not likable, that are not relatable, that are the obstacle, that you have absolutely no incentive or emotional investment or reason to get behind them. If you remember a couple of years ago, I talked about that dynamic and shit. If you remember, it was it Becky Lynch when she turned on Charlotte? And I said it was ridiculous that they were trying to make the fans cheer Charlotte and boo Becky Lynch. Because when you're in the standpoint of you're trying to say everything the heel is saying is logical and makes sense and is factual, that becomes the baby face. Becky Lynch was the baby face. Charlotte was the heel. Charlotte was the obstacle. Becky Lynch was, yeah, maybe she lashed out character-wise a little bit. But damn it all, like... The people gravitated towards Becky Lynch. You're trying to make them boo Becky Lynch. They didn't want to. Charlotte is the one to boo. Clearly. How many times have we said that about Cena over the years? And even when we're talking about in the 2014 to 2019 version of heel Roman Reigns. That's right. I said it. Heel. And when he came back in the summer of last year. And he made his baby face turn. That's right. I said it. Baby face turn. Like the dynamics made sense again. So if I'm going to shit on WWE for that and doing it for years, I'm certainly going to do it with AEW too. Like you want to play in the big leagues and you're being a big league company, then you get some of the big league heat and criticism that comes along with it. You don't deserve a free pass. And I look at this whole story between Anthony Agogo and Cody Rhodes, and I've got to ask the fundamental question here. Why in the fuck would fans boo Anthony Agogo? And why in the hell would any fans cheer Cody Rhodes? I'm not talking about the people that are there ringside, the wrestlers, the talent that are getting paid in part to try and play up the Agogos to be hated and Cody Rhodes to be cheered. I'm talking about the regular standard wrestling fan, the regular standard even hardcore AEW fan or hardcore AEW unrealistic, uh, irrational mark. Like you look at this fundamentally, why in the hell would you boo a go-go? Why in the hell would you cheer for Cody Rhodes? And I know what some of you are going to say, well, you just hate Cody Rhodes and that's why you think he's not worth cheering for. Yes, I absolutely dislike the bastard. He's a lying cocksucker. And it hasn't just been to me. It's been to other people too. Like he's a pretentious little prick. Like you can go on and on and on. So he deserves to be viewed as the heel that he is because he is one in real life. But this goes way, 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 way beyond that. Like can you not see these founder Memphis types of traits that are starting to creep up more and more? Like... There are plenty of reasons to hate Cody Rhodes. And you look back this past Wednesday, that promo, or is it two Wednesdays ago, whatever. You look back at that promo, and it's a perfect example of it. 
He went through this big, long diatribe about bullshit just to announce his match with a go-go at Double or Nothing. Because, of course, he's one of the EVP, so he's got to be a big fucking deal. Even if his match isn't for the world title or a title, like he's still got to come across like he's as important as anything on the fucking show. Just like when you look at the previous week, wasn't his match with QT Marshall, didn't he frickin' get busted open? Like, wasn't he juicing during the match? Like, of course that asshole would have to do something when the focus of the entire show should be building up to blood and guts. And that's the only place you should be seeing blood and guts on the goddamn show. But not with this a-hole. This self-centered, egotistical bastard. And you listen to the promo where he's talking about. He tried to play that reprehensible double side, like, uh, both sides crap. Like, who the fuck wants to hear that? Sounded like some totally woke but totally unaware politician. And pro holding up his wife like, look at me, I'm cool because I've got a black wife. Look at me and my unborn mixed biracial child, by God. That's the American dream. Like everything about this bastard is not relatable, is not likable. He's a second generation guy that massively benefited from nepotism to get into and stay in certain levels and spots in WWE and wrestling as a whole for over a decade. Here's a guy that goes vulturing around to try and latch on to others. And as much as I'm not a huge fan of the Bucks of Sucker, Kenny Omega, the reality is in the larger scheme of things, like they have done more on their own to draw money than this asshole Cody ever possibly could imagine. So he sought out the opportunity to kind of latch on. That's what he does. Bastardizes his half-brother's name. Bastardizes his daddy whenever the fuck he wants to. Always got to sit there and try and rip it off from, I'm going to be my own man, but I'm going to dye my hair blonde, get the stupid ass neck tattoo. Like so much about him is just fundamentally not likable. Like what's the appeal here? This whole nightmare family thing they did for a long time. He's got like 20 people with him at frickin' ringside. He's sitting there and taking away precious primetime TV airtime to sit there and do a baby gender reveal, to do the frickin' video package to show that, hey, we're pregnant, Pharaoh, I know you're the daddy, but let's pretend Cody did it. Like, that's a level of narcissism and egotism that I could even aspire to. And I got a big one, damn it, but I ain't got that fucking big a one. Like, that is some God-level, Memphis mid-card level type of ego and view of self. Most people do not give a fuck about your stupid wife. Most people do not give a fuck about your stupid baby. Like, good for you, congratulations, but stop interrupting the damn wrestling show to talk about it. And stop trying to make it a big thing, not to mention you're whining and pissing where you're almost crying, it seems like, during every damn promo. Like, there is absolutely nothing here about Cody Rhodes that is likable. Meanwhile, you go to freaking Anthony Agogo in a company that lacks legit, credible badasses, here is one! He is one! He's a former bronze medal boxer at the 2012 London Olympics! This is a legit dude! In a business, not just AEW, but a business as a whole, that lacks dudes that you can take seriously, that instead is full of dudes that you think on a good day that you could take, and I'm here to tell you, in many of those cases, you probably could, but you're not going to take somebody like a Roman Reigns or a Bobby Lashley or a Brock Lesnar. You're certainly not going to take somebody like Anthony Agogo. If you think you are, you're freaking insane. Oh, or you were a silver gold medalist in the London Olympics in 2012 or a professional prize fighter. That's beating him. So at a time where we need people that come across legit, we need time that brings some credibility and respect back to professional wrestling. Here's a dude that brings that. He stands out as unique and different in and of itself. He looks different. He talks different. He kind of works different. Like so many of those things are so appealing. Why in the fuck would anybody want to boo him? And then when you look at the fact that he's got, I think the eye injury where he's like 78% blind in one eye or fully blind in one eye, like it's basically what led to his boxing career ending. So this is a guy that, you know, certainly being biracial himself, Cody Rhodes trying to go the biracial card to somebody that is actually fucking biracial. 
or black or whatever. Either way, you get my point. Like, how the hell are you going to lecture somebody that actually lives the fucking life? And to think over in England and in the UK in general that a go-go didn't face problems and didn't face discrimination? Are you fucking kidding me? So this guy has overcome obstacles, overcome a very serious career ending for his boxing career, eye injury, and is here at this moment in AEW, poised to have his first pay-per-view match one-on-one -on -one against fucking Cody Rhodes. All the while, coming out, and when he's cutting promos on America, he's not saying anything that people from all political spectrums wouldn't potentially agree with. We value profits over people. We can't even provide affordable health care for folks. Like, he, you've seen some of them, and he goes on and on. Like, again, relatable. Again, whether you're feeling the burn or you're a fucking Trumper for life, like, all of you in some way fundamentally agree with that. So you've got one entitled nepotistic asshole who has also propped up his wife into positions, frankly, that she doesn't merit or deserves, which also led to her getting TV time that we all wish we could get that time back in our damn lives, who sits there and always has to go out of a, his way to make everything that he's involved with a big fucking deal, which goes beyond being just smart business because he is one of the more well-known names in the company to now this is about ego and he can't see past his own bullshit. You talk about this guy who uses his wife as a fucking prop, which apparently she likes to. It's my honor to be the first black woman in the Rhodes family. If anything, it should be their honor. Why in the fuck does it have to be her honor? You want to talk about some sellout bullshit? There you go right there. And then sitting there and throwing his damn kid into it, which has nothing to do with it, and then talking all this glorious American dream crap. You know, for millions of people, it's a really tone-deaf promo. Really tone deaf and really stupid. And to sit there and think that in 2021, the dynamics of UK bad, USA good. You're not in Ronald Reagan's fucking America anymore, Cody, you dumb piece of shit. And Tony Khan, if you signed off on this, screw you too. This is so stupid and stubborn to be trying to force people to present pe Cody in a way that makes him in any way feel like he's supposed to be the baby face here. He's a prick, a dick, and a jerk. Who's out for himself. Everything about him and the way he's coming across is all heel. A go-go's the guy that's actually had to overcome obstacles. A go-go's the guy that's actually legitimately successful as an athlete. A go-go is a guy that represents something new and fresh and different for AEW. Represents one of the real badass, legit dudes in wrestling. But we're supposed to boo this dude? That's crazy. And I hope nobody does. I hope everybody sees this for the bullshit that it is. Oh, Cody's going to serve up this guy on a platter, so you can't be real until you go through Cody and all that bullshit. Again, just another example of how eminently hateable and dislikable Cody is. Stop trying to push Cody as a babyface. It doesn't work. His character doesn't come across that way. And most certainly the real life person sure as hell doesn't come across that way. If you want to make some actual money with Cody Rhodes, have him be a fucking heel. That's something that everybody can buy into. That's something that is easy to believe. That's something that you look at it and you say, you know what? He could portray that very well because it's what he is in his everyday fucking life. But a go-go here is absolutely positively 100% the baby face, period. And we're going to shit on WWE for all the dumb times that they try to go against all the logic and they present these characters and these stories in the wrong ways, then we damn sure and well should do it for AEW too because they deserve to be criticized for this because this is stupid. A go-go is your hero, American or not. Doesn't damn matter. Cody is your heel. He's the villain. He's the obstacle. He sucks. Especially in this role. It feels so phony and disingenuous. I just can't believe that people are going to buy into this. But you know they will because we can't question anything with AEW. Fuck that. They deserve to be clowned for this because it's stupid.